So hey everyone, uh, Ken Busby here, your cultural czar and proud board member of the Tulsa Symphony, here today talking with Jarrett Bastow. He is uh, bass with the Tulsa Symphony. Jarrett, good to see you. Hey, good to see you too. Thanks for doing our musician moment with us. This is uh, a great chance for the Tulsa Symphony to showcase its outstanding musicians and for people to learn a little bit more about the musicians that are making all the great music happen. So um, let's jump into this. I know... I know that you're originally from Albany, New York, mm -hmm. and here you are in the middle of America. I know. What <laughs> up with that, huh? Well, um, while I was at Northwestern University back in 2011 to 2013, there was an audition for the Tulsa Symphony back mm -hmm. in March 14th, so Pi Day. Oh, um, nice. Yes, and I took it. And I didn't think anything was going to come of it. And I got the job as well as the principal for the Symphony Northwest Arkansas. Right. And then I decided to take a chance and move out to the middle of the country and make a freelancing career out of it. Wow. Okay. So um, now that you've been in the middle of America for a number of years, I guess yeah. what, since 14, I guess? Uh, no, I moved out there... Tulsa, August 2013. 13, okay, okay, 13, okay. Mm -hmm. um, how, how, how do you like this part of the country? I really like it. I feel like, you know, as an East Coaster, mm -hmm. born and I didn't really belong. So moving to a completely different world has really reshaped my thinking about who I am as a person. And I feel like I gained a lot of value and moral out in the middle of the country than I would have if I stuck around in the East Coast. Interesting. Uh, that's good to hear, though. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so listen. I, I know. I know you. Uh, obviously, you're. you're um, don't you? Uh, you have a larger role with uh, Symphony of Northwest Arkansas. Yes, I'm their personnel manager. Right. As well. Is that is that? Uh, what does a personnel manager do exactly? Personnel manager. Uh, what? who work in that position do they hire musicians uh whether it be for a full season or a contractual basis depending on their status within the orchestra uh they make sure that there's a full orchestra on stage they make sure that um principals have a say in who should be on stage should a member of their section not be present for that given service gotcha. they're charge of auditions, they're in charge of uh, creating personnel budgets for the duration of the season, dependent on an instrumentation you're given. So there's little wow. things that, oh, I, it can be stressful, but it's fun. I was going to say, it sounds pretty stressful. Lots of moving parts, literally. Yeah, and I um, mean, there are moments where I've had to hire people three hours before the first rehearsal, and I'm all good. It's fine. <laughs> wow, you've got the right personality to be able to do that. That's <laughs> awesome. I think that would just terrify me, but wow, that's that's impressive. Yeah, you get, you get it done, right? The show must go on, as it were. Yes. Yeah, yeah. How interesting. Well, uh, tell me, what, um, if if you weren't, well, let's, actually, no, before we do that, let's talk about some of the other things you're doing, because you're part, you've been doing some online uh, college work and training classes and program stuff. Tell me some of what you're doing with that. So, what I did after graduating from Northwestern in 2013, I ended up getting another master's in arts leadership and cultural management through yeah. Colorado State University. Oh, yeah. And I have a little bit more specialization in arts management, project planning. Uh, I have grant writing uh, capabilities as well now. Uh, there are all sorts of different elements that I was curious about since becoming a personnel manager mm -hmm. that I really had to gain more information. Sure. It. And so I decided I was going to get an arts management degree since then. That's, that's awesome. Well, that's those are great skills to have and so needed in the nonprofit world. So that's <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. And then you're you're also Suzuki trained, right? Yes, I am Suzuki trained in both cello and bass. Okay, let's see. Now, those are both stringed instruments. Yeah. Um, you play them similarly, I guess. Uh, wh why, uh, why cello? Why cello? Um, well, I picked it up in high school uh -huh. when 
I was kind of getting bored of the bass parts. Okay. And, and I decided, okay, I have a basic musical sense of there's the bass clef, different strings though, different tuning system. Mm-hmm. I thought it was a challenge, really. Yeah. And stuck with it ever since. I joined the cello choir at Ithaca College during my bachelor's period. Uh huh. And, you know, I ended up investing in a better cello over time in Tulsa through Tulsa Strings. Wow. Uh, I really started teaching lessons uh, for cello about 2014. And I felt like there was something missing in my life. And that's when I went into Suzuki, when I got my first uh, feat of training. Okay. I training was said and done Mm -hmm. for both instruments so that's primarily what we do as a teaching philosophy right right and so and so you're teaching now too of course yep wow so is (laughs) do you have any downtime (laughs) (laughs) what's that oh Uh, now (laughs) yeah right 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 so when you do have those few minutes of downtime what what do you like to do to relax what do i like to do to relax honestly uh being with my partner at home, uh, just sitting back watching Netflix when and where I can. <laughs> right. It's because, you know, my my livelihood uh, is based on traveling everywhere. Right. And, you right. know, being in Northwest Arkansas, I'm kind of in like this central hub mm-hmm. of different places that I can go play and orchestras with. So I have what I call an arc glossary radius. So I like arc- that. Arc glossary. Uh, uh-huh. Missouri. I so, like it. Thank you. And so I go to all of those different areas, as well as maybe a couple others, like in Little Rock or Texarkana, maybe even Shreveport, if there's availability for it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I just, I'm constantly on the go. So right. when I can sit down. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm almost like, what do I do? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh no, I have five minutes. Now what? Now what? <laughs> How do I fill this time? Because I have to have it filled. Uh, Absolutely. That's funny. Have you have you ever thought? Uh, just curious. Have you ever thought if you weren't a musician, what you would be doing? Oh man, that's a really really good question. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, maybe arts management would be the you know thing that would be in replacement of being a musician. Right. Over time. I don't know, but if we're going like way off the beaten path, right? Um, I really for a while wanted to go into criminology. I don't know why. Okay. Um, I would see criminal minds and I'd be like, ooh, behavioral analyst. That sounds like a great <laughs> job. <laughs> <laughs> That's really awesome. Deep into the psychosis of someone. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would say, and in the musician world, for the number of musicians that I've met over time, you could spend a lot of time with just musicians. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> just say it. Just say it. <laughs> Oh, that's fun. That's fun. Um, so since uh, I, I want to get to, I want to hear uh, what you're going to play for us today, because I know you're going to share a little bit of, of music with us. Um, but what what's on your, besides that piece, I'm assuming, unless you're doing it from memory, what's on your music stand right now? What are you, what are you playing? On my music stand right now, um, I'm working on the Bodicini Grand Duo Concertante. Okay. Um, for violin and bass. Um, it was written by the Italian composer Bodicini, mostly known for you know being Italian opera driven, right, but right. he it and he really catapulted the technical abilities of bass, left hand and right hand, etc., to make it almost violinistic in a way. Okay. So I'm working on that with uh-huh. a colleague of mine in town. Uh, I'm also working on uh, the Von Hall Concerto. It's something that I've never uh, got my feet wet with ever during okay. my days. Uh-huh. And I said, oh, okay, it's time to learn this. So, <laughs> Well, good. Yeah, I mean, what better opportunity than right. when I have a lot of downtime. Right. So right. two things are on my stand at okay. this very moment. That's that cool. I, that my phone is literally on top of. Okay, so. okay, that's good. That's good. <laughs> it's protecting it. It's protecting it. So, uh, so listen. Uh, we'll wrap up our time today uh, a little bit, but uh, tell me, tell us what you're going to uh, to play for us. Okay, so I've been diving into the acapella app. There have been a number of different musician friends of mine who have played with themselves um, with one piece in like a chamber music setting, mm. but 
they in like little slides of themselves playing off of each other. Uh-huh. Um, there's some sort of clinging that I've been feeling with missing my friends and missing the people that I'm playing with and missing for playing for my communities face to face that has sort of driven me to want to play uh, Nimrod from the Enigma variations oh. of by Edward Elgar. Yes. And um, I found a bit of sheet music that's out there for a cello ensemble, but of course I'm going to play it on bass. Right, um, right. Um, <laughs> um, but that's what I'm going to end up playing, and it's awesome. mostly about a friend that he confided in, mm-hmm. but the piece itself is about a conversation with him. But okay. a lot of uh, people who... Peace mm-hmm. for them. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of what I feel like I'm missing that I'm hopeful for that it'll be in my horizons in the near future. Absolutely. And I think it will. I think it will. Yeah. 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 Well, that's awesome. Well, Jared, listen, my friend, it's been great to visit with you today. Thanks yeah. for taking the time. And sure. uh, so we will now, uh, audience friends that are listening to us, uh, we will we will stop our interview and we will turn and let Jarrett uh, perform for us and we will enjoy it immensely. So you take good care and uh, we'll talk to you later. You too. Take care, Tulsa. Okay. Hmm, bye-bye. Bye, Ken. Bye. <laughs>